What's up guys, it's Logan here from the Motorcycle Forge and today we're going to go over some fundamentals of how a carburetor works and how to set them up. Contrary to a popular belief, you don't actually have to be a wizard to understand how a carburetor works. So you just follow this video and you will be a wizard like me. So the first part of the setup on our flat side carb that we're going to do is the float height. Now the float is what controls how much fuel is in the bowl of the carburetor. So how that is metered is this is a float here, and this here, tiny wee thing it is, this is the float valve, and this moves up and down with the level. So this is buoyant, it floats in the petrol, and it moves up and down, and it will have something much like this, and it seals against it, and stops more fuel coming in. So when the appropriate amount of fuel gets in, it seals and stops. So the amount of petrol you want in here is enough that it is going to not starve of fuel at wide open throttle. So we want enough fuel to be coming in to go into, into the Venturi, into the motor, and not run out of gas. Now, the easiest way that I do this, you want it sort of as close as you can get it to the top without hitting the body of the carb and it closing before then. So what you want is a bit of fuel line like this, and you can blow through it and just listen for air and you just hold the carb level and you slowly lift it up like so 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 about there is where the float valve cuts off the fuel and that's a pretty good setting for a base point now you can test this you can go out if you're at the racetrack find a nice big straight just hold it pinned whole way and if you if it's going good going good going good and then it starts to run out of puff it could be the float height is too low and it's running out of fuel in the bowl and if that happens you'll need to raise your float height so how we do that is this small tab here we'll bend it down to raise the float height and bend it up to lower the float height next up is our low speed circuit so this one here you see there's a tiny wee flat head down in there that looks like this here now this is a uh, low speed pilot jet now this meters how much fuel goes into our engine at idle and very and part throttle so this controls how much fuel and this here this is our mixture screw which is in the side of the carburetor here and this meters how much air goes through this hole here to combine with the amount of fuel that comes from our low speed jet. So you just want a good starting point there and if your jet for the low speed is relatively close, then your mixture screw, you should be quite sensitive. You should be able to go in and out and it should alter your mixture and ultimately the RPM that your bike is running at, at idle. Right, to set up your pilot system, you want a good starting point, so just simple quick Google search, you'll figure out what other people are using, for because there's no point trying to reinvent the wheel when someone else has done it before, and done all the hard work. And once you've got a good starting point, you want to get your bike hot, up to operating temperature, you want to have it idling, you know, turn down your idle, so you're going to want a flathead screwdriver, this here's your idle, and you want to turn it down so you've got it running almost as slow as it will go, maybe around a thousand thousand rpm to 1500 depending on the motor if it's a bigger motor it'll have a lower idle and once you've got it quite low then adjust your mixture screw which is that one there and adjust it till it's at its fastest idle without touching that and then adjust that again to suit which rpm you want your idle set at now the next part of your carb which controls your mid-range is your needle so this is a needle here there is a ton of different needles you can get for most carbs especially motorcycle flat side carbs like these and it just goes in your slide and they have notches in them so if you look at the top there there's little notches which this wee circlip clips into and you can move it up and down based on where you've got your circlip i've done a quick diagram of how the needle operates so this is the needle here that's the needle seat this is the venturi and it lifts up so when you open your throttle it's up like that so mid-range this taper governs how much fuel is escaping from your main jet which is down here and so 
what I would do is start on the middle setting and then once you're on the middle setting go for a ride on the bike see what the mid-range part throttle feels like it feels good you could leave it as it is now for this style here car which is a 30 mil or a 28 mil KN flat side PWK carb I would recommend for a four stroke or two stroke an N80F needle or a JJY needle. I've used those in several race bikes, two stroke and four stroke, and they seem to work really well. The last part of the fueling system is your wide open throttle, which runs on the mains. So this here is an atomizer. This has holes in it, and what is in the end of it, this is your main jet. So they've come in a variety of sizes, um, and they've just got a wee hole through them, and the size of the hole determines how much fuel goes through. And so this screws into the bottom of the carburetor here, right there, and that determines how much fuel at wide open throttle is being delivered to your motor. So when you've got your slide in here, wide open throttle, all the way at the top, and the carb straight through, and that means your, your needle is all the way at the top, and it's, the needle's not really doing anything now, and it's all on the main system. So having this right is incredibly important. Like the... The first two are relatively important, but on a race motor where you've got a lot of wide open throttle, you want it having it the correct air fuel ratio. Now there's two ways to tune your bike. There's the tried and tested, put jets in, ride the bike, put jets in, ride the bike again. Do that, which is a lot of fun, or you can do it a more modern way with an oxygen sensor. So you put one of these in your exhaust and it measures how much oxygen is in your exhaust system. And then you can it tells you a number which on an air fuel ratio gauge and then you just adjust your jets to get the right number 12 and a half or 13 to 1 so it's 13 parts of air to one part of fuel and that'll give you the most bang for your buck if you want to see more educational videos like this then just let me know with a like and subscribe and then i'll make more videos like this in the future and this has been logan from the motorcycle forge i hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you next time